Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we will build on the previous session where we integrated the Kafka stream to our data lake. The data lake is based on the following tech stack, min.io, the storage layer, Hive Metastore for managing external table, and Trino, our query engine. We will bring the data warehouse functionality to this data lake and convert it into a data lake house. For this, we'll use Apache Iceberg. This will allow us to overcome some of the Hive Metastore's limitation. We will enable full functionality of Apache Iceberg. Iceberg is an open table format designed for large tables. Iceberg brings the following functionality to the world of data lakes, schema evolution, transactional consistency, and time travel. For full coverage on Iceberg, watch the Data Lakehouse video. I'll leave the link in the description below. Apache Iceberg supports the following open file formats, Avro, Parquet, and ORC. These format let us optimize how we collect and store data in our data lake house. If you recall, previously we stored the Apache Kafka topic data in a JSON format. This limits the Apache Iceberg's capabilities. Therefore, we'll persist Kafka's data in Avro format in the data lake. We'll switch over to Postman. Here we'll create a new S3 connector using the Kafka Connect API. I have pasted the connector definition. This is available in the GitHub. Our connector name is S3 Avro Connector, and this is a Confluent Sync Connector. We provide our S3 bucket, and for better space usage, we are using the Snappy Codec. We also update the value converter to Avro. So this is our connector definition. We'll switch to a POST request and send this payload to Kafka. It returns a success message, and our connector is created. For this connector to generate a new topic, we'll go ahead and add few records to our source table. Okay, now we can head over to our S3 and refresh the Kafka Avro bucket. We see a topic folder that contains our source Kafka topic. In the partition, we see a parquet file that stores the data stream from Kafka. Okay, the first part of requirements is complete. We have data in Iceberg compatible format. Now we'll switch over to Trino, our query engine, and create an external table. First, we'll create a Hive table. This will create an external table that reads data from our S3 Avro bucket. We specify the format to Parquet. Once we execute this script, the external table is created. We can query it to make sure it contains data from Kafka. The select query returns data, and we see 42 records in this table. We can issue a SELECT statement to confirm the count, and we get 42. Now we are going to create the Iceberg table under the Iceberg schema. We execute the script, and the table is created. This table is empty. We can insert data in this table by using the Hive external table. We'll insert data in this table by selecting from the Hive table. This operation completed successfully, and we have inserted 42 records. We can query this table to make sure it contains Kafka's data. The query returns the expected data, so all is well on this front. I am going to remove the table DDL to give myself some real estate and start exploring Iceberg's functionality. Let's take a look at the first 10 rows in the source table. Let's say we do not need this data in the Iceberg table. We can simply go ahead and delete these records. We use a regular SQL delete statement with a where clause. Let me make sure I am targeting the correct table. Okay, we have successfully deleted 10 records from the iceberg table. If you are to query this table, it should now contain 32 records, and this assumption is correct. Our record count is 32. Let's go ahead and test the schema evolution. We will alter the name of the ID column to sales ID. So we are going to execute this statement, and it completed successfully. We can query the table to confirm this change. Our change is persisted to the iceberg table. We are going to go ahead and make another change. This time we add a new column. We add the net sales column with a float data type. Okay, float is not supported, so I'll switch it to double. The statement executed successfully. We should see a new column and it is present in our table. However, it is blank. So let's go ahead and assign a value to it. We issue an update statement and set the value of this column using a calculation. Once we execute, 
the query engine warns us that there's no where clause. We'll go ahead and acknowledge this and execute the statement. It updates the 32 rows. Now, if you were to execute the same query against this table, we should see values for the net sales column. This column is populated with data. Time travel in Iceberg is a handy feature to look back in time. This gives us the table's history. Each change to an Iceberg table creates a snapshot, which can be referred to by using SQL. To see the snapshots on a table, we can use the handy metadata table that exists for each table. This snapshot table shows the create, insert, and update operations on our table. We can see the type of operations was performed and when it was executed. We can select a certain snapshot using the snapshot ID. In the first instance, the table is empty. The second snapshot state is when we inserted the 42 records. In the third snapshot, we deleted the first 10 rows. And in the final state, we have added the net sales column. Another great feature of Iceberg is the ability to roll back a table to a previous snapshot. Sometimes this is used when a row or rows were accidentally deleted or updated. As long as the snapshot exists, then we can roll back to any existing snapshot. Let's cover this with an example. In this scenario, we want to roll back to a state before the delete operation. Let's see we want to see the state of the table, including all the 42 rows. To roll back, we can issue the following command. Now, if we query the table again, we should see the delete operation is rolled back. And we should see all the 42 records, including the deleted rows. So there you have it. We have data warehouse capabilities in the data lake world. We can perform various DML operations on the iceberg tables with transactional consistency in place. Our table schema can evolve over time with our changing analytics needs. You can explore more on Apache Iceberg features and see how you can utilize them in a data lake house. This is all for now. I hope you enjoyed the session. Like, share and subscribe. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.